I'd also like to commend the President and Director Mulvaney on proposing a budget that balances. It's been years since the White House has even attempted a balanced budget. But here in this very first budget proposal, President Trump has provided a plan to get to balance. You may not like how he had Director Mulvaney get there, but I'm looking for suggestions. Please, instead of complaining, share some ways to make a difference or at least something that you liked. This year, we take an important first step forward in helping to change the way we do business here in Washington by focusing on the importance of a balanced budget. The reason this work is so important is because we must restore the trust of the American people in their government. On that chart, the uh, gray is the mandatory, the red is the interest, and you can see on the revenue that, that's projected that uh, we'll be borrowing absolutely everything that we have for defense and non-defense uh, by 2027. That means our entire discretionary budget, which Congress actually debates each year, will be completely deficit financed. Ceding this level of congressional budgetary responsibility is not an outcome that Jefferson and Madison could have possibly envisioned for our country at its inception. We all know that our current debt burden is unsustainable. We're in the worst fiscal shape since World War II, and if things don't change, we'll add another $10 trillion to our debt within 10 years. Even this budget, getting to balance adds $5 trillion to the debt. We must do better. Congress can help Washington become more accountable to hardworking Americans by spending taxpayer resources efficiently in order to improve or eliminate government programs that have received little oversight or are simply not delivering results. Specifically, the budget projects more than $2 trillion in increased revenue from increased economic growth. What initiatives in your budget do you expect that will lead to that, that growth? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, when Secretary Mnuchin, Director Cohn, and I, as members of the so-called Troika, sat down shortly after um, I, was, uh, I was sworn in, we had a chance to look at the CBO numbers um, that proposed or projected that 1.9 percent growth. And then we asked ourselves, okay, what are we going to do to get that number to 3 percent? That $2 trillion worth of additional revenue you have mentioned um, comes from the 3 percent economic growth throughout the 10-year the uh, budget window. And so what we said is, okay, um, we're going to have tax reform. Uh, that should increase GDP. We're going to have regulatory reform, which we actually thought had a larger increase on GDP than tax reform. Uh, we're going to have new trade policies. We're going to um, undo um, Obamacare uh, and repealing, according to the Congressional Budget Office, repealing Obamacare actually added to the GDP growth in this country because even the Congressional Budget Office recognized that the passage of Obamacare created a disincentive for people to work. So that's what we did. We went through our policies line by line, and um, I tell you, depending upon the values that we assigned to them, we actually came up with some numbers that were higher than 3%. Um, the President did mention numbers higher than 3% on the campaign, um, but we settled on the 3% growth. We thought it was a conservatively defensible number.